Hey everyone, uh, this is the first part of uh, some videos that I'm making to explain step by step how I'm making a loop pedal in Max MSP. I'm currently running in Max MSP version 8 in a Mac. So I will explain how I got to my version of a loop pedal. So the first thing I wanted, and this video will be about, it's a metronome that will be able to uh, measure bars in milliseconds and how you can use that same value and that same result to control the buffer size for each of the tracks here in Max MSP. <laughs> so um, the first thing we have to do is to have a metronome and the metronome uh, has to be able to translate the BPM into a value that Max actually need controls. So to do that, uh, you need a float number and then you need uh, this argument. That is the exclamation sign divided by 60,000. Now this goes into logic that, you know, a second has 60, 60 you know, uh, a minute has 60 seconds. So if you do this operation, uh, it's basically a translation. This here you enter the BPM that you need or that you want for your piece and uh, this operation will give the number that Max understands to control time in its metronome. So then, you know, you put the toggle and then, oh, and then a bang uh, and then this is basically a very basic metronome that will be working perfectly within Max MSP, you know. Um, so, uh, to show you that real quick, uh, then you just put this very huge. Here you enter an 80, and then you do this, and that's 80. And if you want 120, it changes that, 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 and um, 160. And obviously we can add some sound to that in case you actually need a cowbell sound or any type of sound. But right now that's not our main interest, so I'll move on. So here is basically your metronome that translates BPM to whatever Max needs to control its metronome. Now, what I'm interested in is a, I want a, the loop pedal to be um, within a controlled world of uh, measures, you know, and beats. Uh, what I want to know is how much time does a bar take in max so a buffer size will be open and will be controlled by that size. So for example, to do that we create a counter and within we put the arguments from 0 to, I don't know, 5, right? We connect this here and then uh, we put the argument so it controls a timer as well. So for example, I put if the integer in this case will be be integer in you know this type of numbers equals uh, five in this case then bang so and just to reset everything I will put this right there oh, and this will control and will stop the counting but this thing right here will also um, control a timer now, I, pull, I will put and I will use the timer because remember that my objective right now is to know how much time in milliseconds does a, a given bar actually takes. So this bank that controls everything will be here and controlling the, the, the start where, when does this timer has to start taking information and this one, when it should stop. So the result here that that could be a float uh, number will give me the time in milliseconds that a certain bar at a given BPM will take in time. Oh, so I'll put this one because usually those numbers could be a bit bigger. And you know that will give me the time that a certain bar takes. Now I will add a little another thing here so we can actually understand the logic of the numbers that I'm entering right now. Um, uh, we'll put an integer. So I put this at 5. You would imagine that I'm measuring a 5-beat bar, but I'm not. 
Actually, when I enter 0 to 5 in the counter, it will measure a 4 beat bar. Remember that when we are uh, measuring like a bar, you know, and we don't stop at 4, we stop at the beat 5, we stop at the hit number 5 to measure a 4 beat bar. So uh, let me show you this with the example. This will give me the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and it will stop at 5, and that's exactly what I want. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and stops. So that's exactly what I wanted. If I entered, why I'm not entering number 1 here? Because when you enter number 1, it doesn't exactly start at 1, you know? Even if I put the 0 here as an argument, so it starts at 1, it will enter 1. So it will kill one of the num one of the beats. So that's why I have to have the 0 to 5 argument to have a correct measure of a measure. <laughs> so for example, if I'm at uh, 80 and I reset everything, this will be at 0 and it will start at 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, and everything else. So that's why I have to put uh, the counter from 0 to 5 if I want a 4 beat bar. In case I wanted a 3 beat bar, I have to put the arguments 1 to 4. Let's do that again so you see it. 1, 2, 3, 0. And there you go. Right? And it didn't stop because I didn't change the argument right here. Um, but I think that my point has come across. So let's return to the 5. And actually put 6. Why? Because in my original exercise, that's what I wanted, you know, like, for my original composition, the thing, uh, the reason I made this patch was because I wanted a 5 beat bar measure. So, there you go. So if we do this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and stops, it tells me that at uh, 100 BPM, a 5 beat bar will take 3,000 uh, milliseconds, which is the same as 3 seconds. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is ha wha what happens if I want to uh, record more than one beat bar. Because that will only give me the time for one beat, for one uh, bar. So actually I put this argument right here, connect that, and then I can multiply this number, the result of this result times the, bar, the, the amount of bars that I want to record in my patch. Yeah, because this is equal to one bar. So what if I want more? Um, but we have to remember that this one is already a bar. So if I put, if I want a four, uh, I want the buffer to record a four four bars. I have to take into account that this one is already one. So it's to record four bars. I need this operation. Okay, and the result will give me a new float number, and this number can. Can, uh, can control uh, the size, actually, of uh, the buffer size. It can control the buffer size. So, for example, this will allow me, this argument right here, will allow me to control the buffer length uh, in real time without having to change the argument every time I want to change from beat, uh, if, uh, well, not beat, yeah, well, Every time I want to change the BPM, that will actually happen. So, for example, I put 1 and then this. So, it can change as I please, when I please, actually. So, for example, if I want an exercise in which I want three buffers, three tracks, as you might, as we might understand them, I just duplicate them and I put number 2, put number 3 and I'll connect this to each of them. So the argument uh, comes across each time. So, yeah, and to prove that, that I'm actually able to do this change of buffer size in real time, I will put this. Now, here it says that the mouse, the mouse position in editing window, the editing window, oh, when I close this, when I, oh, What's going on? Yeah. When I double click here, it's the buffer size open. That's the window. So 
Let's see. We have to start out all over. Now, it gave me how much time I need to record to make uh, four bars at this BPM with um, this length. So, for example, the buffer size should be this long. So, if I open it, and if I make this huge, you will be able to see that there's 10,000. And if I click here, my mouse position oh, will be there in the buffer size window. No? If I click it here, 5,000, 3, it corresponds, right? So now let's check if I want to make it a, a faster and also smaller, meaning that I only want two. I want to reset and boom. It changed. So the buffer size should be way smaller. I should not be able to see any 10,000 seconds available. And it did. Now it's only 3,000 and if I click here, it will be there. So yeah, this whole section is metronome. This part uh, can count the measure that I want and the timer will tell me how much time in milliseconds that bar will actually take. And here, that number could be multiplied by the amount of bars that I want, that I require for my exercise. And that number could be then translated to each of the buffers so I can control how much time each of them will be recording. And obviously we can go crazy here. I mean, you can create a buffer size, uh, a separate buffer size for each of the tracks. I mean, uh, if I wanted the buffer, the first buffer to record only one uh, bar, like thinking about a drum loop that should be repeated over and over, then I could just directly connect this argument to the first one, if I, and so on and so forth. I mean, you can go crazy with this type of number, you know? So yeah. I think I'll end this first part of the video here and then I will continue to um, with the second part which is actually the looping and how to do that. So if you like this, uh, then go on with the next videos. So I'll see you, I'll, I'll keep talking shortly. <laughs>